Cross the rainbow bridge of Asgard, where the booming heavens roar. You behold in breathless wonder the God of Thunder, mighty Thor. So the Avengers are coming out next year, Joey, and we had to watch Thor so we can know what is going on. What, what do you mean we had to? Well, I mean, I don't want to go in there blind like an idiot and see this guy with a hammer and say, what is this? I had to see what it was all about. So you're telling me that we had to watch Thor so we could watch the rest of the Avengers? Okay, I guess that makes sense. So then we had to watch Thor. And we did, at the long last, came out in theaters like, God, no, what, six months ago? Yeah, we're a bit behind, but it's all right, though. I mean, we as long as we got to see it. That's right. So we got it on DVD today. Um, Legally, and, of course. Yes, and dis- yes, that's right. It was a legal purchase. I have the receipt in my back pocket right now. I'll read you the UPC code. Oh, you don't want the UPC code? Okay, I won't read it to you then. Mm. Holding the case right now, it's really shiny, kind of like that rainbow bridge. <laughs> well, if you're going to talk about that rainbow bridge and how that receipt fell down from the sky, we must be talking about Thor with his hammer from the gods himself. Yeah, so let's talk about the movie a little bit. Going into it, I wasn't really sure what to expect. I mean, it seems like kind of a weird idea. Like, oh, here we are in the Marvel Universe, which is based sort of in reality. And then we're going to talk about gods from other dimensions. And it seemed like it was going to be a little bit of a hard sell. Yeah, you have a guy with a cape with a hammer who's a god. So it's a bit tough to... How do you market that? I guess to... uh, Stop talking about marketing. Okay. This isn't a business I class. I'm a businessman, so that's all I thought about. Actually, I was talking about the numbers before, too. So Yeah, and it's, it actually made more money than Captain America. So but let's talk about the movie itself. So you've got uh, Chris, Chris Hemsworth playing uh, the character of Thor. Uh, the movie starts off, sort of gives a little bit of background on the you know what what is their home where they live in Asgard, Odin, which is the god, which is currently the king there, and he's kind of cocky and he makes some bad decisions and that get him banished. And he ends up on Earth, meets up with uh, Natalie Portman's character uh, named Jane Foster. She's some sort of astrophysicist, though she rarely gets to do much science talk. That that was one thing about it. It was like they really kind of very much limited the, oh. Her role? Yeah, her role as a scientist. She was more like, you know. She was more there just in my As a love interest. Right, she was just there with her friend being like, wow, he's really ripped. Right, yeah, yes. Like, and then you have Kat Dennings, who I think is great, has comedic relief, which is fine, but I mean... If you're going to talk about comedic relief, I think we, we both laughed at the same part. Okay. When, um, it's not spoiling it, because this movie came out a while ago, <laughs> but there's a part where, like, Thor drinks coffee, I think, and he's, oh, like, yeah. he's like, this was good, and he smashes it, and he's like, another! <laughs> <laughs> that was great. And I just, I just want to do that the next time I'm in a coffee shop, or I'm at... Holmes Dining Commons. <laughs> I just want to have, you know, my little cheap coffee mug and be like, another! Yeah. And smash it on the ground. It, it, it was definitely a good place to put humor in because I'm not saying it was like really serious, but once I had that happen, I was like, okay, this guy seems like he's relatable now. Yeah, it, that, I mean, I think it helped. And I think Hemsworth did a good job. I mean, this first real big film I think he's been in. I mean, he was had a, you know, pardon the joke, a cup of coffee in Star Trek, get it? Um, <laughs> and, and now, so this is his next big role. And I think it, it would say his performance was was more than enough. I mean, you didn't have a lot of humor, but I mean, it wasn't really supposed to be that funny. I mean, there was a lot of, I guess you would say, like generic fish out of water jokes as he's, you know, a god that's sent down to earth and he's confused by all these awkward pleasantries like how to get another cup of coffee. Right. You don't smash it on the ground. But that's what you do when you're a god in Asgard. Too many Dutch angles. (laughs) Man, you know, right off the start, they had Dutch angles, which was fine. But then it just, every time they had like a scene, there's like at least one Dutch angle shot, and it just after a while, I started. I personally, I was just like, man, they're really taking this to the next level, and it just got a little bit annoying. But again, just nitpicky issues, not exactly that big. So I'm looking on the back of the DVD here, and there's a note. It says that apparently there was a faulty issue with the uh, the balancing oh, thing okay. on the camera. So right. everything they thought was actually yeah. level was not. So that's what, what looked level. Yeah, turned exactly. out to not be. Yeah. Well, right off the start, I wanted to go into this and hate it, just because I saw Joey right before, I thought this was kind of dorky. But uh, watching it, there are some instances where I liked, as I said that, when he threw down the cup, it was funny, <laughs> and it wasn't... It That's wasn't, the one scene, your favorite scene yes. in the whole movie. <laughs> and and, and, and there, there wasn't... It, it was never long enough where I got bored with it. 
and it told its story. Even though I'm slightly confused, we have a friend who actually knows more about this, which we're probably going to talk to later. So he'll probably clarify more yeah, things. Apparently our friend has actually been to Asgard, which is nice. Right, and he's traveled across that Rainbow Bridge. So Rainbow Bridge. He knows what it's like. Yeah. So if I had to give it out of five hammers, I'd give it a two and a half hammers. Two and a half hammers. Out of five, because I, I think it's fun to watch, and I think if you don't know much about it, you'll be fine. I liked it a lot more than Captain America, and I, it's... I guess it's, I, I sort of have to, when I decide how I feel about something, it's, it's always as comparisons. It's, it's kind of hard to evaluate things just in as they stand alone. Fun and engaging. Um, it had a lot of different characters, and I think some of them, uh, even though they were, you know, not necessarily the most well-rounded characters, I think, like, uh, for example, the Warriors 3. <laughs> Asgard University. Asgard University, yeah, where he majored in... Um, Hammering. Hammering. <laughs> actually incorporated um, Agent Coulson, who's been in all the Marvel movies. Oh. They incorporated him, as as all the Marvel movies have done. I mean, he served his purpose. So I felt like I like this movie wasn't limited to, you know, what can happen in the real world, the set at Asgard, making it how it looked in the final product. In the end, I'll, I'll give it three and a half out of five, I would say. Three and a half hammers. Because, like I said, it was a, it was an interesting thrill ride. And, and the movie ended, and I said, you know what? I'm intrigued by this character of Thor. I want to see what happens with him now. 